They assessed. I became an inpatient. Over the years, I've had many inpatients. No matter what state I went to, the state hospital found me. Not the community hospital like ECMC or Buffalo General, but Michigan State Hospital at Wayne State University and or uh, the state hospital in Maryland. Plus what Buffalo. people would have called mental institutions? What we call the state psychiatric ah, facilities. Yes, not private. Not the private the or ones. the county run, like the county hospital, but for us Do downward. you remember the day when you went in not really. No. No, I don't remember the How day. How would you I describe went. your state of mind at that time? Confused, afraid, uncared for, hopeless, helpless. But you went and you asked for help. Sometimes I went on my own, other times I went by force. Uh, sometimes I was a threat to myself and others, so I had an escort. In your process of recovery, and as you said, it's an ongoing process because it's true, depression, schizophrenia, drug addiction, those are all with you until the day you're not alive anymore. So, but you do learn to manage them. What was the hardest thing for you personally in your pathway of recovering to your point of stability right now? Accepting this is who I am. These are the cards I've been dealt. Play them the best I can. Don't beg or look for a better hand do the best I can with what I have. What are some of the perceptions that you think average society has about persons with a mental illness or a drug addiction that you think are probably wrong? Unfortunately, I must say this. Because of the way the media portrays individuals with psychiatric diagnosis, I'm the guy who is most likely to be on top of the bell tower waiting to do something bad. I'm the person who's doing something bad at another public event. That's not true. The statistics show that even when you look at the criminal population, we are the victims, not the ones perpetrating crimes. Uh, one, per one percent of one percent are diagnosed individuals. Okay, the majority of individuals incarcerated do not have a mental health diagnosis, but if you listen to the sensationalism, we're the bad people when we're not. What's another perception that you'd say is just not accurate? I can't work, I can't be productive, I can't be responsible. I'm too sick, I need somebody to fix me. I'm not a broken person. I'm just like a diabetic or a person with cancer. I need treatment. I take my medicine just like they do, guess what? I live productive lives just like they do. There are kids out there in town right now who are thinking about getting into drugs or who already are on illegal drugs. What advice would you have for them to maybe consider another road? If you're not currently using drugs, do not believe the false statements that they will give you good feelings or they will relieve pressure or they will help you cope. That's not true. For those who are on and currently do not know that there's a way out, there is a solution. People can recover. People can live successful lives. I became honest with myself and I said, please help me. And then I accepted the help. I didn't tell those who were experts, those who used to use how to help me. I just took their advice. What kinds of drugs did you have in your background? name it from heroin, cocaine, uh, uh, gasoline, when I could not afford those, uh, inhalants of all sorts. If I could find a way to numb my feelings or my thoughts with any substance, substance I would do it. It's interesting that if the public's preconceived notions about individuals with some of the challenging things that are happening in your life were true, you wouldn't be here today doing what you're doing. You're an example of a person who actually was able to overcome many of these challenges and find a sense of some kind of balance in your life that even though, like you say, it's not cure, it's sure better than where you were 22 years ago. It's a lot better than where I was. You know, you asked the question about how did I. As young people, we are given good messages by our parents and those who love us. My mother, my dad, my 
extended family. They always said that there was good inside me. My father's expression, boys, you have a lot of potential, potential, but why you won't use it, I just don't know. Uh, they gave me those good messages. As a grown man, I decided that now I can do what I want to do, and I did what I wanted to do, and I went down the bad path. But once I embraced who I was, good, bad, and ugly, I went back to those good things they told me, and I went back and even said, forgive me and, and the support and love, thank you for it, and I expect to continue to receive it, which I do. More on hero Leslie Saunders when we return Medical Matters. Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Lavin, and I'm a pediatrician. Over the last 20 years, I've worked with over 10,000 families to help them sleep through the night, enjoy meals together, and have their children respect each other and the family rules. In our books, we present solutions to these problems. For only $16, you can have a copy of either book, or together, for $28. Order your copies today at advancedp.com. Hi, this is David Kettlewell, host of the Medical Matters TV show. I'm here with a close friend, John Wright of American Ramp Systems. John, tell us a little bit about wheelchair ramps. David, American Ramp Systems manufactures a steel ramp. It's an open mesh metal. It allows snow and moisture to pass through in the winter times, making it the most non-skid ramp on the market. We sell these ramps and we rent the ramps. We offer free home evaluations and they require no building permits. Very good. So when you need a wheelchair ramp, American Ramp Systems, freedom for life. We're back, Medical Matters. And today's show is living proof that governmental programs and support of the federal government to help society can be extremely effective. And we're talking today with Leslie Saunders, who is in the Mental Health Peer Connection Program, which is part of the Mental Health Systems Advocacy Program here, and it's through the Western New York Independent Living, Inc. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So, way back, 22 years ago, you're addicted to all kinds of drugs, as you said, anything you get your hands on. Correct. Cool. You had schizophrenia, and you also were a manic depressive. You began, uh, your parents had told you that you had a lot of good inside, and you sought help through a hospital system started to put your life back together. What, are your, what did your parents say about that when you started turning around? Because certainly they knew you were on the street. Yes, they did. Um, currently, my father is as proud as a dad is the day that their child is born. He is very happy today because of the turnaround in my life. My mother uh, is no longer alive, so part of me praising her life is to live a good life, live the things that she taught me to do. Did your mother live to see you turn your life around? Unfortunately, I don't think so. She died of cancer in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I, I can't remember. And at that point, I was making attempts to find recovery, but I was just not there because her mindset, I don't know if she knew that I was trying but I know and believe now that it's all okay. okay. It's okay. Talk with us a little bit about your day-to-day -day work as a peer advocate. You don't have to okay. use names of who you're gonna go okay. talk with, but what would be your typical day and what would you say to somebody and what kind of things are they saying to you? Well, as a mental health systems peer advocate, no longer do I do individual peer counseling, very sometimes but not every day. Day to day, my responsibility is to interact with the executive leadership of the mental health system in Erie County. Sometimes that interaction will take me to the people who they serve at Spectrum Horizons, crisis services, all the housing providers. You have a, an array of housing providers for mental health recipients in Erie County, DePaul, Buffalo Federation of all of those executive committees, I am to bring the perspective of those who use the services. And the only way I maintain that perspective. For more Medical Matters television shows, go online to medicalmatters.tv.